This lesson is for sections 2.1 and 2.2 in our textbook, so it's a mixture of both. Um, we're going to be talking about coordinate systems and graphs of functions um, with an introduction as well into domain and range. So we're going to, the whole point of this is to be able to graph functions without a calculator and to be able to state the domain and range of a given function. So many of you guys have probably remembered something about domain and range from Algebra 1, but I'm just going to do a brief review real quick. So the domain of your function is the set of values for your independent variable. So in this case, our x-axis represents the independent variable, and our y-axis represents the dependent variable. Now the domain is the set of all values for your independent variable. So in this case, this is the smallest x value here, and over here we have the largest x value here. So from your, on your x-axis, the smallest and largest here represents your domain, and we use a capital D to represent domain. And then for the range, we are looking from basically the lowest to the highest point. So for your range of your function here, the lowest point on this graph is right here. The highest point is up here, so I'm going to follow that over here. And this re would represent right here my range. Range is using a capital R. Okay, so now let's actually do a couple practice problems using that concept. So in our first example, example A here, for the domain, I want to look from left to right. So I want to look for my smallest x value and my largest x value. Alright, so if I'm looking from left to right, I notice that this is the smallest x value here at negative 3, and my largest x value is over here at x equals 6. So my range, or I'm sorry, the domain falls between negative 3 and 6. Now when I write that with notation here, I'm going to use an inequality. So I have the lowest point, that number comes first, your variable's in the middle, and your largest point comes last. Um, you want to make sure your symbols in between, they're going to be inequalities, are correct. So let's talk about what this open circle here means. Now, when it's an open circle, that means that's actually not part of the domain. So negative 3 isn't actually in the domain. It's kind of the starting point here. It's, we're going to use a less than symbol to represent that. Now, for a closed circle, all the way over here at x equals 6, we're going to have a less than or equal to symbol. So when it's a closed uh, circle filled in, you're going to use a less than or equal to symbol or a greater than or equal to symbol. If it's an open circle, just a strictly less than or strictly greater than symbol. Okay, now for the range, we are going to talk about the max height and the lowest point. So we're looking for heights here from top to bottom. Our lowest point on this graph for the range is at y equals negative 3. Right? This is the lowest point in this graph. The highest point in this graph is up here. So you want to make sure you're looking like top to bottom as opposed to left to right here. So we're at negative 3 and positive 7 here. This is going to represent our range. Now we use the smallest number, we place that first. Our variable is going to go in the middle. Our largest number is going to go to the right. And we're going to make sure we have our symbols correct. Now at both of these we have closed. So even though there's not a point here uh, or like a circle drawn in, we know that this po point does fall on the graph, so we think of that as a closed circle. Okay, so anywhere on this is represented by closed circles. Anywhere here is all closed circles. So for our range, we're going to have negative 3 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 7. Okay? All right, now the second graph here, a little bit trickier. For our domain, left to right, our smallest x value is at negative 2. Our largest x value is at 10. So watch why, how I use the notation here. I'm going to have negative 2 is less than or equal to x. And this time it's just going to be less than 10 because, again, the number 10 isn't actually in our domain here. We have an open circle. So the function is not actually equal to 10 at that point. All right, now for the range, range we want to look from top to bottom. So what's our lowest point on this graph and what is our highest point on this graph? Well in this case we have a constant, right? There is no low and high point. So the constant, it's constantly steady at y equals 6. So therefore I only have one number in my range and that's y equals 6. Ok, 
Okay, now C is also a little bit different. When I look and to do my domain here, and I look left to right, I have a starting point at negative 1. Right? This is the smallest x value, right? Nothing goes on beyond here. So the smallest x value here is at negative 1. So I'm going to use negative 1 is less than or equal to because it's a closed circle, x, and that's less than or equal to. Now, as I go to the right, though, I do not see any start stopping point. This is going to go on. It's a line. It goes on forever and forever and forever. That means as I extend x, the x-axis here, I'm still going to find values, since this goes on forever and forever, Whoops, I don't know what happened there. But we're still going to find x values on this graph as we continue to, to increase in the x-axis. Okay, There's still going to be points found on this line because it continues forever and forever. So when we want to express our domain this time, since there is no right bound, right? There is no, uh, there's a missing value here, we only use this. And we're going to actually flip it so that we have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So our domain here is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. And you can see that because we have a start starting point, but it keeps going forever and forever in that direction. Now for the range, we want to look from the lowest to the highest point. So our lowest point here is at negative 2. So negative 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to, now let's try to find the stopping point. Now again, this graph here, this line is going to go infinitely. I can keep drawing that forever and forever. There is no max height on this graph either. So again, we don't have a value here to put because there is no max graph. So we're going to write this as y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So the lowest point is at negative 2, and the y value keeps increasing and increasing and increasing, so it's greater than or equal to negative 2. All right, next for d. I'd like you guys to pause this one, try this one on your own, and then um, come back and play so you can see the solution worked out. OK, so the domain of this function from left to right is going to be negative 3 is less than x is less than or equal to, let's see, this one doesn't have a number, but I'm going to call that 1. And for the range of this function, the lowest point here is at negative 2. And the highest point here is at 4. And that represents your range. Now moving on to e. For the domain, this time, again, we don't have a, a clear starting and stopping point, right? This is going to go on forever and forever. We don't have a tick mark where we can say, oh, yeah, that definitely starts and stops. So because there is no um, restriction on what my x value, what my independent axis is going to be, I have a domain of all real numbers. Okay, So from left to right, there is no starting and stopping point. Right, This is going to continue on forever, left to right. And I'm going to use all real numbers as my domain. For the range, I want to look from top to bottom. Now, there is a max height here, right? It's at 5. This function does not go any higher than 5, meaning there's no number. 6 is not part of this function, right? So uh, in this case, since it goes forever and forever in the negative direction, so as you keep going to negative infinity here, you will always find a point with a y value here down here. So your range is going to be y is less than or equal to 5. Your range is represented by all values that are less than or equal to 5. All right, now for f, I'd like you to pause here, try this one on your own, and then replay, hit play, and then you'll see the solution as well. OK, if you are looking from left to right here, your domain doesn't stop. There's no starting and stopping point, so it's going to be all real numbers. Now for your range, you do have a low point, right? We're going to look top to bottom. You have a low point at negative 3. Your range is greater than or equal to negative 3 because this goes on forever. Okay, So any value greater than or equal to negative 3 will be found on this graph. All right, now the whole point of understanding domain and range is to be able to plot functions. Um, and then we're going to actually state the domain and range afterwards. So this first graph here, for number 1, 1a here is a linear function. So I hope you remember from Algebra 1 how to plot this. We're going to just do this pretty pretty quickly. This is my y-intercept. So I start up at 4 here. And I have a slope of negative 3 fourths. 
So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, so that I plot a point here. And I just repeat that process. So down 1, 2, 3, to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. And I can also go up 3, so up 1, 2, 3, and left 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's my line. It's not very nice. I'd like you guys to use rulers, um, but anyway, that's not really that important right now. Let's talk about the domain of this function. So from left to right, this function continues forever and forever, both left to right. So it goes through our graph, meaning like, let's say that this was a picture. It's going beyond our picture from left to right, which means that our domain is going to be all real numbers. Now for our range, from top to bottom, this also, right, this graph goes through the top, through the bottom, which means our range is also all real numbers. For any line, uh, when you graph a linear equation, your domain and your range are going to be all real numbers. Okay. Now this next problem, B, is also a line, it's just written in standard form. So we could do one of two things. We could find um, and solve for y and find the slope and the, the y-intercept. But I also want to be able to graph this a second way, which is graphing it in standard form using x and y-intercepts. So this is from, again, algebra 1. An x-intercept is where your graph crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to actually go back to here. The x-intercept here in this graph is where it crosses the x-axis. So right at that point, the y-intercept, we already know what that is here because we started with that point, um, is where it crosses the y-axis. So if you look here at every uh, x-intercept, the y value is always going to be 0, right? The y value here is equal to 0. So for an x-intercept, y equals 0. I'm going to plug that in to my function here. And so 3x equals negative 12, right? Because the, this term completely goes away. And I'm left with x equaling negative 4. So the x-intercept of this line here is at negative 4. The y-intercept, for y-intercept, the x equals 0. So now I plug in 0 here. This term goes away, and I'm left with negative 6y equaling negative 12, which means y is going to equal 2. So I plot here at 0, comma 2. And here's my line. All right, now, for the domain, if I look left to right in this function, it goes through this side, right? From left to right, it expands all the way through those two lines there, so this is going to be all real numbers. From top to bottom, this graph also goes through the top and the bottom of this picture. It never stops, so that's also all real numbers. Okay, so now we no longer have a linear function. Now we have something that's called a quadratic function, okay? So we don't necessarily know where what this is going to look like, um, so what we're going to do is use a table of values, an xy table of values, and we're just going to plot specific values and try to see what our function is going to look like. So I'm going to use a standard table of negative 2 to 2, and I'm going to plug these x values in here and get a y output. So if I, if I square negative 2, I get 4. So I'm going to plot the point negative 2, 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I have negative 1, 1. 0 squared is still 0. So 0, 0. 1 squared is 1. And 2 squared is 4. Okay, so I have the point 2, 4 as well. Now, this is the graph of y equals x squared. So these are graphs that I want you to kind of memorize the shape. So whenever you have a quadratic like this, you're going to get a parabola. Okay, so it's really important um, for future graphing that you understand what kind of shape you should get when you see something that looks like this, y equals x squared. So let's talk about the domain of this function. Now, I could have picked any other x va values that I wanted to, right? This represents the domain. Now, it's, it's not just negative 2 to 2. I could have picked, you know, negative 35 if I wanted to. I could have picked negative 1,000. I could pick positive 6,000. So you can see from the table that my domain is going to be all real numbers, but you can also see from the graph, right? The graph here doesn't just stop at the points that I plotted. I've shown arrows here because this is going to keep going from left to right. This is going to go through this screen from left to right, so my, range, or my domain here is all real numbers. For the range, now this kind of shows you here um, what your range is going to be. Now let's try to make y equals x squared 
a negative number. Let's try to make x squared a negative number. Well, no matter what you do, let's say I plug in negative 3 and I square that, I get a positive number. If I square negative 2,000, I still get a positive number. Okay, so this graph will never be negative, and you can see, based off of the graph as well, the lowest point here is at y equals 0, which means that the range is greater than or equal to 0, right? The range of this function starts at a low point of 0 and goes through the roof. Okay, now in problem number 3, we have a different function here. y equals the absolute value of x. So again, we don't necessarily know what that looks like quite yet. So I'm going to plot some values. I'm going to do my standard negative 2 to 2 here. And if I take the absolute value of negative 2, I get 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0 is still 0. The absolute value of, oops, skip 1, is 1. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. So if I plot these points, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2, my graph is going to look like this. Okay, so this is the um, absolute value function. Okay, this is again another shape that you need to know. So this is a V shape. So with x squared, you get that parabola. Here you get a V shape. Okay, now the domain of this graph from left to right, there is no starting and stopping point, right? So this is going to be all real numbers. For the range, again, there's a low point here at 0, right? This is the smallest y value on this graph, and it keeps going forever and forever infinitely here. So it has no uh, upper bound, so we're going to say y is greater than or equal to 0. All right, now you're also going to be doing some functions. So this is a translation of that function, the absolute value function that we just did. We're going to plot the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus 7. So let's say I just graph, and I just do a table here with that standard table that I use, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So if I plug in negative 2 minus 7, the absolute value of negative 9 is 9. And I'm just going to fill out this table really quick. So negative 8's absolute value is 8. And I get positive 7 here, positive 6, and 5. Okay, so I'm going to plot the points negative 2, 9, which is here, negative 1, 8, 0, 7, 1, 6, and 2, 5. Okay, so based off of what I'm graphing here, this actually just looks like a line. Right? That looks like a line just because of the points that I chose to use. Now hopefully you know that that's not okay because this is an absolute value graph. This is supposed to look like a V. Okay, So there's one of two things that you could do here to try to figure out um, where, you know, what this is, what the shape is going to look like. So I need to actually figure out where the point is of it bouncing back and going back up, right? So like a V shape comes down, it bounces back up once it gets to what we call the vertex. Okay, So if I want to try to find the vertex here, I want to plug something into here, um, and that vertex is actually going to be found at 7, 0. Okay? So at x equals 7, I get 7 minus 7 equals, the absolute value of that equals 0. So it's 7 comma 0. This is actually where my vertex is. So it's going to come all the way down here and then bounce back up. And I have values like 8, 1, 9, 2. This should be what my function looks like. So basically the reason why we put this problem on here is so that you realize that when you don't have um, a clear picture, you know, if you left your graph looking like this, okay, you're going to think, oh, that has a domain of all real numbers and a range of all real numbers because it's a linear, you know, it's a line. But in fact, this is not just a typical line. This is an absolute value graph of V shape. So it should come down to 7 and bounce back up. Okay, so you're going to want to either plot additional points or look at, look at your actual graph here. Try to find when y equals 0 and solve. So we have here now a domain of all real numbers. With our correct graph here, it's a domain of all real numbers. And our range is going to be at the low point here of y equals 0. Okay, so it's greater than or equal to 0 because it goes, again, 
starts at zero, but it goes higher and higher.